doing Mike Bradley, I hope you're doing well as always. Now I'm a little bit bunged up, I've had a cold all week, I can't hear very well. <laughs> you know that kind of head cold where everything's just blocked and just phlegm. That is uh, how I am, but I'm trying to put on a brave face for the camera and more importantly for you guys right there. So a lot of people have been asking me about this and I thought it was about time I talk about it and that is how to get a good amp tone. How to get a good guitar tone using our amps. Now, as you can see behind me, I've got a few amps. I've got my Cornford MK50 here, which is very much in the reign of like a plexi, you know, um, awesome amp. And then I've got uh, my newest kind of amp here, the Hampstead RT20, which I adore. Uh, the sound at the beginning was from the Hampstead. And then I've got my Fender Supersonic, uh, and I've got a Stage 100. Uh, I've got a Marshall DSL <laughs> 100 under the stairs, <laughs> don't worry about that. But what I'm going to do today, I'm going to use this amp and I'm going to use that amp as well. And I'm going to just show you how I get my guitar tone. Um, now, of course, the title of this video is how to get a good amp tone or how to get a good guitar tone, whatever I decide <laughs> when I upload it. Um, firstly, I should say this is all very subjective. Um, this is all, what I'm about to say is what I think is good guitar tone for me. Uh, you know, I'm um, a blues rock type of player. So if you're a metal player, um, you know, this might not be the video for you. But then again, saying that, I might show you a little bit of how metal players get their tone as well. Um, but, and also as well, every amp is different. You can even have the same type of amp and it'd be different, you know. I mean, with Fenders, they're very much the same. They're built to it, but you get some amps by certain companies, by a lot of companies, you know, and this isn't a bad thing, but they all kind of sound different, just like guitars. You can have, you know, a rack of, you know, say 10 blue Fender Stratocasters, right, with a maple neck and fingerboard all lined up in a shop or whatever, and then out of those 10, you might only play one where you're like, oh yeah, this is a goodie. You know, but on the surface of it, they're all a blue Fender Strat. But you know what I mean, they're, everything's, they're all different. You know, everything's kind of talking to each other a bit differently and whatnot. And of course, regarding amps and guitar, you know, it all depends what guitar you use it into the amp. Uh, I've got a couple of pedals on the floor here, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, so I will use a humbucker as well, uh, just so you can see all the differences with that. But uh, like I say, yeah, this is just my, opinions um take it what you may but it's all about experimenting and i'm still experimenting you know i'm constantly searching out that you know that was a tone tone chaser so to speak so um let's talk it let's start yeah as i'm plugged into this let's talk about this amp so my hampstead um i've got it set up as a as a really nice kind of core, kind of clean, but a little bit of breakup kind of sound. So this is just the amp. So with that, if I dig in, you can hear there's a little bit of, it's not super clean, but then if I, I mean, that's the bridge pickup, let me put it back on the neck. Now if I play softer. It's nice and clean there. Uh, and then of course I can then manipulate the volume knob and get it even more, change the pickups. This is the neck and bridge. You know what I mean? So I've done a little close up so you can see how I've got um, the amp set up here. Now with this, and as you're seeing that, with this um, amp, there isn't a mid control. Um, they've got a thing called a voice setting, all right? Uh, and basically the voice, I leave that on all the time on this amp, but the voice is pushing, it's like a mid boost, it's pushing the mids. Now, if you get anything from this video, mids are so, so important. If you're after that kind of cool, you know, blues rock guitar tone, if you think, you know, Clapton, um, Gary Moore, uh, Joe Bonham, Massa, um, oh man, I can go on and on, you know, um, Richard Sambor from the These Days album, oh, I loved that, that was like my thing when I was a kid, that was like, <gasps> the Tone Masters he had, anyway, but 
it's all about the mids. So, like I say, the pedals I've got, there's a little pew, a picture of the pedals I've got, just a few here. I'm not touching them at the moment. I'll tell you when I am. If I turn this switch off, you'll see a red light go off. And now I've got this sound. <laughs> lot lot bassier um, and it's literally been scooped out the mids been scooped now if I now it's a lot more kind of punchy and I like that sound I like that kind of punchy sound whenever I mean when you hear guitar players they've all got their distinctive signature sound like you hear BB King do his kind of no you automatically BB King um, everyone's got their sound and I like to think my sound uh, is kind of cheeky, like a cheeky guitar sound, um, without sounding cheeky, uh, without sounding cheesy sorry, I'm quite a cheeky bloke if you <laughs> spoke to my mother or my girlfriend you know, um, but or if you're a regular viewer you'll, you'll know I'm a bit cheeky and nuts alright so and so I do think you know all this aside, gear aside, our personality will come out in the guitar but by dialing in a good tone it helps even more. So I've got the a bit more bass pushed up here and the treble cut off because in this room it's it that's what it wants. You know, do I stick to those settings all the time? No, I don't. You know, I'll I'll change it to, to, uh, depending on the room or whatnot. You know, so I mean, if I turn the bass down, the bass is off. That's just treble and mid now. You know, if I turn the treble off. Now there's nothing on either spectrums, no bass, no treble, it's just been pushed up in the mid. If it was a graph it would be da 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 da. It would be like that. Now if I that's the bass all the way up. Now with it next to me it sounds a little bit lopsided, you know, because there's no treble there. So that's I think now at the top of the EQ. So I'll put it back and just I as I heard the change I stopped. Now to my ear that's still a bit trebly. So I want to push the bass up. That to me now is a bit more of an even tone for, for me. Now it does have a gain, this, uh, gain, gain this, a gain knob. Uh, at the moment I've got it kind of uh, ooh, just over 11 o'clock, alright? Now if I turn it up, sorry, it's on 3 o'clock. Really hope that's not clipping, apologies if it is. So now it's a little bit more gain kind of packing in there now. Pushing the power amp up. So 
whenever you've got gain on an amplifier, that's the preamp. Um, and you know, when the old days of uh, you know non-master volume amplifiers, uh, to get the overdrive, they'd have to turn turn that master volume up. You're turning the power amp up. And that's that secret source. Well, not even a secret, it's very much known. That's the guitar tone. You know, uh, Eric Clapton on the Blues Breakers album, you know, he, he got a Marshall Combo 2x12, which is now known as the, blue, uh, the Blues Breaker amp, cranked that up to 10, and he got that overdrive. And then I think it was in the kind of mid 70s, mid to late 70s, they started introducing uh, master volumes with the gain. So then, you know, that kind of typical kind of bedroom guitar player where they've got the gain on 10 and then their mass volume on like one. And yeah, you've got overdrive, you've got distortion there, but it's very compressed. And then by turning amplifier up, you're working the power amp valves or tubes, you know, wherever you are in the world, uh, you're working them. And that is the secret ingredient to a good guitar tone, getting those power amps working as opposed to uh, relying on the preamp valves all right so preamp is the gain knob power amp is the master volume knob now obviously i am in a house at the moment so i can't turn that up to 10 as much as i would like to um i mean this is plenty loud enough um that is no pedals whatsoever there all right uh, hopefully you're hearing that all right Just an amplifier, <laughs> and a guitar and a lead, the best way. So there's not a load of gain there, but that's not what this amp's about. Now if I just turn that volume down a little bit. Now I've got the amp pretty much back to how I had it originally. Now I'm gonna kick in this Boss SD1, and as you can see, not much drive really, it's more the level I kind of boosted, so the amp. So, if I hit that and the volume level went down, that'd be bad. You want the level either to be the same. I've got it kind of set up so it's the same because then I've got a boost, um, which I'll talk about in a second on there. So. Slight volume lift, yeah, which is good. Um, but I haven't got a load of gain dialed in there. I've got the volume. So the volume's kind of pushing those uh, power amp valves, all right? Pushing it a bit harder to get a better tone. So the Boss SD1, fantastic pedal. They're like 39 pounds, whatever that is in your currency. Very much in the ballpark of a Tube Screamer. Um, I've had this pedal, oh man, since 2001, 2002. <laughs> my kind of um, clean sounds, you know, happening. So, so I've got, um, I don't know why I'm doing Michael Jackson, it just came in my head. So that's using the Boss SD1. And then I've got um, the other pedal here, which is the Dwayne 69, which is uh, a pedal I've had relatively new now. And I've got that set up with a bit more gain kicked in. So this is the amp. Kicking the Dwayne 69. Yeah. 
and the volume's still about the same, all right? Because that's how I set it up. And then I can obviously stack the two overdrives together, that and the SD1. <laughs> so bunged though, I can't really hear out this ear very well. And I've got a boost if I wanted, you know, which is on the Dwayne 69, so. Which is again, pushing the power amp. So that's where, so two lessons here. Mids are your friends, all right? Now actually, I want to pause for one sec. When I say about a metal tone, if I take the, so let's put the Dwayne 69 on. Sorry, I've got another camera here. Um, I just I haven't got it with me. Um, so, if I kick this voice switch off, so that it's now the mid's been scooped out, I've got a lot more of the... Is it a Stratocaster, yeah? <laughs> a maple fingerboard, so it makes it even more brighter. Kicking even more, gaining. switch I like that sound better all right if I was to join Ozzy Osbourne I'd probably just take the mid off a little bit but I like mids that is a good guitar sound you know I was trying to say tone and sound at the same time then but that's a much better guitar sound for me so and Obviously, the louder you have it, say if I've got all that gain kicking in, yeah? Well, I say all that gain, it's still not loads, but... <laughs> got that sound happening. If I roll the volume off... I've got a, a relatively clean sound. Trust me, the pedals are on. If I turn this volume knob up. I've got overdrive, all right? And then of course, take everything off and you've got a lovely, pure, organic, clean tone, which is just the amp, which is wonderful. So, hopefully that's given you some ideas there. So, I think I, was, I got distracted and went about the mids. Oh, yeah. So, rule number one, push those mids, have those mids going. Um, you'll notice a big, big difference. And also, power amp. That is, uh, so the louder you push your mask, on a valve amp this, on a solid state, it's not really gonna work. The, the more you push your master volume and get those power 
valves, amp, uh, tubes working, that more open sound you're going to get. If you um, follow, for example, Joe Bonamassa on Instagram, and he often posts um, pictures of him warming up backstage or something, and a lot of times he's got like a little Fender combo or a little combo valve combo of some sort, and he's got it like in the toilet or something like that, you know, in another room, and he's got it cranked, and he's got no pedals going, and he's got an awesome tone going on, you know. So, you know, we, we do get hung up on pedals. I've just got a little board here, as you can see, uh, and I, well, I've got a fuzz here as well, actually, just out of curiosity, if you're wondering about the fuzz. Turn the volume down. I love that sound. about the comfort. The Comfort MK50. Um, I love this amp. I've had this since 2006. I think I got this um, when I went to the ACM. Um, all the kind of guys from the guitar magazines, a lot of them taught at the at the music college, and they all used Comfort. So people like Jamie Humphreys, Guffey Govan, uh, Dave Kilminster. Uh, they were Cornford guys. I loved their tone. Uh, yeah, I was taught by Guffrey. That was amazing. So I wanted the Cornford for you no know, since 2000 basically, and I saved up and I got this when I was about 21, I think something like that. Now, as much as I do really like this amp, it's very delicate and has blown up and died quite a few times, and it's a little bit poorly again at the moment, even though I had it serviced. Um, kind of, when was it, towards the end of last year. Um, so yeah, she does make a bit of a noise when I take it off standby. Uh, don't know if you can hear that, but there's quite a bit of hissing going on. Um, but let me just turn off a minute while I'm talking. Um, but no, it's a, it's a great, great amp. And, um, and I say very much in that kind of martial plexi type of uh, school. Um, now, as you can see in the screenshots, I've got it kind of volume one o'clock and I've got the overdrive kicking at the moment, uh, bass, mid, treble, uh, and then I'm only using mass volume two because mass volume one isn't working. <laughs> and then the presence and uh, renaissance. How do you pronounce it? Renaissance? That's how I'm pronounce it anyway. So this is how it's set up at the moment. Oh, sorry. Got to stand by. Now this amp is very, very touch sensitive because you've got that kind of AC-DC crunch going on. Turn my volume down. Now I need to turn it down a little bit there. It's on like seven. You know what I mean? That's really cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I should say, my new EP, which I'm 
it's, it's done, it's mixed, it's done. I've just got to get some bits together, but really happy with it. It was all recorded with this amp, and I had the master volume uh, two all the way up, all the way up, and then I was just adding in the overdrive when I needed it. Um, you know, to taste kind of thing, but like, but like a condiment, <laughs> a bit of salt and pepper. I didn't use any overdrive pedals at all. And I should say as well, this amp, it doesn't like overdrive pedals. And also it's got a wicked overdrive tone, so I don't need to. Um, now, if I take the overdrive off completely, and so where it's got volume there, that's kind of like the preamp valve. It's not kind of, it is. So like I was saying earlier, um, but this is a 50 watt amp, it's very, very loud. So I've got the mass volume quite low. Um, but you can trust me, it sounds amazing. I mean, when I had doing the EP, the walls were shaking outside, like the plaster was falling off. I swear to God, I wish I filmed it. Um, but so this sounds, you know, it's not clean clean. I can get it clean clean, but this is how I would set it up. So I would have a, a foot control to adjust, uh, to change the overdrive channel. Um, and then I'd have it set up like this, the overdrive, probably how, however I wanted it. So here's. And if I want clean, clean. Very, very touch sensitive. So I'm all, that's where I kind of learned about this volume adjustment from having amps like this, you know. And then if I want to really uh, push the overdrive, I mean. I've got the reverb going in the front of the amp at the moment, it's a new neighbour, but I prefer an effects loop, so let me turn it off. Now let me turn that overdrive off, and I'll kick in the Boss SD, so this is the amp, Boss SD1. Now, I'll be honest, um, that doesn't inspire me like it did with the Hampstead. When I used those pedals of Hampstead, I was loving it. Not really getting that same feeling from it with this. But when I use the Amps Overdrive, there I like it. So that's what I meant. This amp doesn't like overdrive pedals. And it doesn't really need it because it's got a really nice chocolate brown overdrive. So this is how I would set that up. So I know I said earlier, about humbuckers, so let me just switch over to a humbucker guitar and I'll go back to the Hampton and do the same thing. Fair is fair. <laughs> The overdrive off. There's no overdrive from that. That is just how the preamp going. Put a bit of overdrive in. Thank you. 
Oh my god. I love it. I love it. <laughs> this is my guess of 345. Um, yeah. I, not really much to say, really, is there? I mean, you hear it yourself. So, um, and I say the overdrive there is back at 12 o'clock where I started. Um, oh, Jesus. Let me just go back to the Hampstead and do what I did with the settings there, but with this guitar. All right, so back into the Hampstead, and uh, this is just an amp on its own. So it's kind of pushed a bit more than what it was earlier. What I might do, just push the volume up a little bit on the SD1 here, not the gain. You hear a difference there. Sixty-nine. SD one and boss together. Oh, and a fuzz. I think you get the idea. <laughs> I really hope you've enjoyed this, guys, and it's given you some cool ideas and tips in kind of sculpting your own guitar sound, your own guitar tone. Like I said at the beginning of the video, these are my opinions, these are, you know, my views, if you will, um, and it does very much differ on the type of amp you're using and of course what guitar you're putting in it and whatnot. But if you're using a valve amp, the important thing to kind of take here are the mids. Don't be afraid of those mids. You want those mids. And when you can, to push those power amp valves, those power amp tubes. Uh, of course, I understand with sound guys, they want you to be quiet and all that kind of stuff and other members of the band saying can you turn down because we can't hear ourselves how dare they want to hear themselves <laughs> you know but um anyway i'd love to know your thoughts let me know in the comment section <coughs> sorry a cough is coming let me know in the comment section below um your what you think you know and also if you've got any tips yourselves you know use this as a public forum you know let's all exchange ideas and uh help us all get the, the guitar tone we hear in our head out, you know? Anyway, 
I'm gonna have a cup of tea. If you haven't already, subscribe to this video and like the video as well. And share it with your friends and share it with your nan. I think she'll like to see it. Anyway, take care guys. My buddy signing out. <laughs>